Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Come on, do it, do it! So I was just talking to my buddy Rocco about how the comedy genre in films is pretty much non-existent at this point. When we were talking about it, I couldn't even tell him what the last new comedy was that I watched. So when I saw trailers for The Lost City, which is advertised as a action comedy movie, and it features a lot of actors that I actually like, I thought this has an opportunity to surprise me. Well, it didn't. What an idiot! Oh, what a loser! In fact, I would use the term comedy very loosely to describe it. This is a soft comedy at best. That's why when I see comedies, they don't really stick with me anymore, because they typically don't go all in for the laughs. At least not like they used to. For modern comedy, they typically like to play it safe, which is exactly what this movie does. Why do these things always happen to me? The Lost City follows exotic adventure novelist Loretta as she is placed in a real-life situation with her cover model that feels like it's something ripped right out of one of her books. This concept could have worked. It has the same meta potential as something akin to Tropic Thunder, which does go all in for the comedy, by the way. You have a character who writes adventure stories, and then you have a character who fancies himself as an adventurer, but is really just a regular guy. And they are forced into a situation where they have to be the characters that they are inside of the novel. I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. Unfortunately, the concept alone is where all the intrigue stops. Sandra Bullock, who plays Loretta in this film, was always one of the most likable actresses in Hollywood, in my opinion. Whatever role she was in, you could always find yourself rooting for her. In this movie, though, I found her to actually be very unlikable. And her whole character arc about finding herself after a tragedy is just very cliche, and we've seen this all before. Whoopie fucking do. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed. Channing Tatum, who plays the cover model, I have a very love-hate relationship with. I have seen him show star potential in things like The Hateful Eight or 21 Jump Street, but then he always seems to revert back to playing the same Channing Tatum characters that he always plays. He's good-looking, he's buff, but he's also dumb and buffoonish. Fuck you, science! He's basically the Fabio of Loretta's novels, but he secretly loves her and he wants to be taken more seriously by her. So he tries to rescue her when she's kidnapped by real bad guys who want to find an artifact that she mentioned in one of her books. And this is where this movie goes very much into the more romantic comedy side of things. And eventually they go into this whole thing about how he's trying to teach her how to move on after her tragedy. And Alan kind of accepts that he's more of a damsel in distress than she is because she's actually more knowledgeable about what they're doing and then he has lines of dialogue about being a male feminist and how he believes that women can do anything men can do you know it's typical 2022 stuff F -O -F capital T, soft T huh? I don't know, I started to check out at this point, and honestly, I felt myself starting to fall asleep as well. The highlight of this movie by far is Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt always makes everything at least a little bit better, and his scenes are much more action-related than the rest of the film, which is probably why I enjoyed it a bit more. But his character also amounts to nothing more than a cameo, so a little bit more Brad Pitt could have went a long way. What's in the box? Daniel Radcliffe of Harry Potter fame is the villain of this story. I will say this, he made the villain a little bit less generic than it would normally be for a movie like this. It actually got me kind of interested in the idea of seeing him play a villain just in a better movie. Overall, The Lost City was pretty much what I should have assumed it would be. I had some hope that maybe the actors involved would elevate the material to a certain level, but the characters that are written for them really don't do them any favors and just aren't good enough to be memorable in any way. I wasn't really angry or annoyed by this movie, I was just flat out bored by it. Yeah, I'll be forgetting this movie as soon as I'm done this review, and that's why I'm going to be giving it the careless Sam Gerard. I don't care! So have you seen The Lost City? I hope you haven't, but if you have, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Y'all be cool. Got on.